Hi everyone, I'm Matt, one of the job producers from Lisa House and we've come out into the grounds today to think about trees, think about why they're important about storing carbon and I'm going to show you a way of how to work out how much carbon is in a particular tree. Trees are one of the better areas of storage of carbon in the world. They take in carbon dioxide from our atmosphere and they turn it into oxygen but as they grow they then store that carbon uh, in their trunks or in the roots of the trees uh, and the leaves as well and nowadays when you think about climate change uh, trees are really important because they can be used for climate change mitigation they can reduce the net amount of carbon we're emitting to our atmosphere but they're also being used nowadays a lot for carbon offsetting when we're thinking about carbon offsetting, obviously we need to find out how much carbon are stored in particular trees. So I'm going to show you a fairly easy method of calculating how much carbon is stored in particular trees. I've chosen this particular tree, um, just because it looks pretty nice. And all we need to know is basically the volume of the trunk of this particular tree. So we need to work out a few things. We need to work out the height of the tree, and we also need to work out the circumference of its trunk. So two particular bits of equipment we're going to need. First of all we've got a kilometre okay? and if you don't have a kilometre you can download apps for free on your phone they will then tell you what particular angle you're looking at. Okay? So if I've got this particular phone here, if I was to get this particular app, the kilometre app okay, and look along the long edge of it, I can then look at what particular angle I'm looking at. As long as with a kilometre you'll also need something to measure uh, distances, so a tape measure or, or a ruler, okay, or anything like that, okay, but a tape measure is probably better. So, to start off with, when you've chosen your particular tree, you then need to stand a particular distance away from the edge of it. So what I've done here is I've laid out a tape measure, okay, along here, and I'm going to walk along the tape measure here until I've got to a, a place where I can see the top of the tree easily. Okay, so I've walked out now to about eight or nine metres. Then I'm going to stand at that particular point, I'm going to aim my to the top of the tree like that. And for example, I'm looking at an angle of about 45 degrees. Once we've measured our distance away from the tree, we've measured the angle to the top of the tree using our chronometer, we then need to work out the circumference of our tree trunk. Okay? And to do that we need to measure from a particular height. We need to measure at a height called rest height. measure down 1.37 meters gets me to about here okay and then measure around the outside so I'm basically give my tree a bit of a okay so I'm going to reach around there all the way around this is again very well <laughs> oh what a good hug on a tree and uh, once I've measured that that is coming to 1 metre 30 centimetres. So that's the circumference um, at breast height. So far, what we've measured is our distance away from the tree. We've measured the angle to the top of the tree using the kilometre, and we've measured the circumference um, at breast height. The only other bit of information you'll need to know for some of the calculations is the height of the observer. So the height where the clinometer reading was taken from. So for me, I'm quite tall, it is 1.86 meters from my eye level. So I need to know that also. The last thing we probably want to know is what sort of tree we are measuring. Now, sometimes it might be as simple as, is it a citrus tree or if it's a conifer tree? Now, in terms of carbon storage, the citrus trees are much, much better at storing carbon, mainly due to the density of their wood, but there are a few other factors involved as well. Now, sometimes you might want to know exactly down to species level what your tree is, okay? And if that's the case, you can find probably lots of ID guides um, on the internet, or there are plenty of apps out there as well. Our favorite apps at Leeson House, uh, is one called PlantNet, or there's one called British Trees as well. Both are free, uh, or, but help you ID what tree you've got. Now, this tree is a conifer tree, and I'm fairly sure from using my apps earlier, it is a Scott Pine tree, so I might want to know that for some of my calculations. Okay, so a little bit of maths coming up then. We've gone and measured our tree, uh, put the calculations for our, our Scott's Pine on the board. So we had our distance from the tree being 9 metres, the angle to the top of the tree being 45 degrees, our circumference at breast height was 1.3 metres, 
and then our observer eye level, or my eye level, was 1.86 metres. Now, when it comes to measuring how much carbon is stored within our tree, the main calculation that we need to do to start with is to work out the volume of the trunk, okay? And when, they come to, when we come to work this out, we're assuming that our trunk is a cone shape, okay? So to work out the volume of a cone, we need a third times pi times r squared, r being the radius, and then we times that by h, and that's our height of the tree. And it looks complicated, we actually work that out using some of the calculations, also using some of the measurements we've got. So our height is just gonna be our, our distance from the tree times the tan, or the angle to the top of the tree, and then you add our observer eye level onto that. And when it comes to the radius, we've got our circumference, which again we've got, and we're gonna divide that by two pi. Okay, so in terms of our tree, we'll have a little look at what that means. So our distance from our tree and our example is nine. We're going to times that by tan of 45 degrees, and then we're going to plus the observer height on top. Okay, and if you just put that into a calculator, that comes out as being 10.86 metres tall, which for our tree looks about right, so I'm happy with that. When it comes on to our radius, we just need our circumference at breast height. Okay, so that's going to be 1.3 and then dividing by 2 pi. And again, if you use a calculator to do that one, our radius comes out as 0.16 metres. Okay, so we've now got our r, our radius, and we've got our height, which is our h. So we were to plug that in, we'd have a third times pi times our radius squared, so that's 0.16 squared and then we're then multiplying r by height which is 10.86 and again plugging that into a calculator the volume then comes out as 0.09 meters cubed there we go there's going to be a worksheet that goes along with this video where we're going to then show you the next few steps of how to work out the carbon in the tree but the main thing the main bit of field work um, we've just shown you we've worked out the volume of carbon in that particular Scots pine tree. So using the worksheet that goes along with this video, uh, we've worked out that in our Scott pine tree, that we measured a minute ago, we've got 0.24 tonnes of carbon, which isn't a small amount, but neither is it a very big amount. So what we'd like to see, uh, at least in the house, is if you can get out into your garden or a local park or a local woodland, go and find a nice tree, Go and measure it using some of the measurement skills we showed you a minute ago and try and find how much carbon's in there. We'd love to see any photos uh, or find out any facts and figures that you found out uh, and share that with us on our social media. On that worksheet also, there's uh, some potential for further work. So from this, we can now start working out, well, how does this compare with our carbon footprint? How does this compare with the vehicle that you might drive around with or be driven around with every day? How does that then link into uh, the carbon that's been emitted from your last holiday. It might even link into what you eat as well. So use uh, this data here and use the worksheet and see what else you can find out.